Australia is among a number of Western nations that have supported British and US strikes against Iran-backed Houthi rebels following weeks of interference in the Red Sea, as we just heard. Our political correspondent, Olivia Casey, joins me now. Olivia, good afternoon. We've just heard from the Defence Minister, Richard Miles. What else did he have to say? Well, he really addressed this dramatic escalation that we've seen in the Middle East. So the US and the UK mounted a series of attacks on the Iran-backed Houthi group in Yemen over the past couple of hours. As we know, this group's been causing a lot of disruption in the Red Sea and especially disrupting this commercially vital waterway. Defence Minister Richard Miles confirmed that Australia did provide operational personnel, but he didn't go into any precise detail about the nature of Australia's support. He says that freedom of navigation is essential. The actions that have been taken today, supported by Australia, are about maintaining freedom of navigation on the high seas. They are about maintaining global trade. And that is completely central to Australia's national interest. Australia must stand up for the rules-based order. Australia must stand up for freedom of navigation. When you consider who we are, an island trading nation, much of our prosperity is based on sea lines of communication, is based on the freedom of trade on the high seas. And it is absolutely essential uh, that Australia stands firm in the principles of freedom of navigation on the high seas. The US and the UK received support from a number of Western allies, including Australia, Canada, the Netherlands and Bahrain. I'll take you to their joint statement now. So they've said, in response to continued illegal, dangerous and destabilising Houthi attacks against vessels, including commercial shipping, the armed forces of the US and UK, with support from the Netherlands, Canada, Bahrain and Australia, conducted joint strikes. The Houthis' more than two dozen attacks on commercial vessels since mid-November constitute an international challenge. Today's action demonstrates a shared commitment to freedom of navigation, international commerce and defending the lives of mariners from illegal and unjustifiable attacks. Our aim remains to de-escalate tensions and restore stability in the Red Sea. But let our message be clear. We will not hesitate to defend lives and protect the free flow of commerce in one of the world's most critical waterways in the face of continued threats. Now, we have seen tension really escalating over the past a couple of weeks and even before that, since the October 7, a terrorist attack against Israel. But the Houthis, they've ignored repeated warnings, both from Washington and its allies, to stop indiscriminately attacking these ships moving through these really important shipping lanes. Ultimately, the Houthis, though, are now warning that there could be reprisals. We will not hesitate, God willing, to do everything we can. And we will confront the American aggression. Any American aggression will never remain without a response. And the response will not only be at the level of the recent operation that targeted Americans at sea with more than 24 drones and several missiles. The response will be greater than that and more than that. Well, remember this started because the Houthis were originally attacking ships owned by Israelis, so it was linked to the Gaza war, but it appears the Houthis' uh, MO, if you like, has shifted over time and they have been in recent weeks attacking the US and UK ships. Dr Peter Layton, he is an expert on this issue and he's described today as a significant development. That resolution, which was passed by the Council with China and Russia, abstaining, that was the green light, if you like, for the Americans and the Brits. The, the Americans and the Brits gave the Houthis a warning yesterday to say stop it or else, and the Houthis ignored that and pressed on firing. So a significant development today. We did see Australia rebuff a request from the US just a couple of weeks ago, and that was to send a ship to the Red Sea and try uh, and restore or create some stability in the region. We did see uh, much stronger comments from the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, yesterday when he called on Iran to stop meddling in the Middle East. Janie? 